Hey guys, Preston here from CWI. Uh, it's the weekend after PRI and uh, we're in the shop, so we uh, thought it would be a great opportunity to be able to take some time, show you some of the new products that we're working on uh, and what's going on around the shop. So uh, let's head into the shop and uh, see what uh, Bob's up to. What's going on? Well, I'm installing our new PWM controller on our Project K5 Blazer. So this is our new New PWM brushed motor controller uh, module. It can run up to 100 amps continuous, good for controlling fans, fuel pumps, DC brushed motors and cars. It has PWM, it has input, it has a CAN bus input and RS-485 input for programming. It's kind of cool. So what we're doing today is a standalone installation in the K5. So first thing I'm gonna do is mount this module. I'm gonna hook up the uh, fans and the battery a second relay and we're going to use a exterior sensor in the engine um, to get the temperature to tell this what temperature it is and then turn the fans on and off so in this installation since it's an old k5 blazer with a 350 i'm going to turn the fans on at the first fan on at 150 degrees at 50 percent that's going to ramp up to 100 percent at 200. when it gets to 200 it'll turn both fans on and it'll be hooked to the ac so when the ac is on and the pressure is high, the, uh, both fans will run to cool down the AC so the AC stays nice and cold in the summertime. Cool. What, uh, what kind of motor is in this? Uh... This, is an 80, this is an 87 K5. So this is a pretty, pretty old school Chevy 350. Um, old school to most people, but it was new to me because I grew up around this stuff. Um, I've had a few of these. This is kind of a shop vehicle. So instead of LS swapping it, this thing ran good. Um, we put one of the CNR Racing GC uh, radiators in it with two 14 inch GC fans. Um, in between cylinders six and eight back there, there's a 3 8 pipe plug. And uh, we unscrewed that plug and then screwed the sensor in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this module over here. Um, we kind of prepped this already. So we're gonna bolder up and then hook up the power and ground and uh, Put some fuses in it and and wrap this thing up today So this is the power harness for the PWM controller. Um, you wanna make sure that whatever you're gonna drive, you fuse the controller. The controller will protect itself, but you wanna fuse it for the maximum current for the product. So like these fans, they, they draw about 22 amps each when they're running um, at wide open 100%, but they have inrush current of just a little over 30 amps. So I put a 40 amp fuse on them. It's really to protect the wires from shorting out or if the catastrophic failure with the fan but the PWM will uh, protect itself. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got the wire harness already kind of mocked up. I'm gonna cut this in half here. And these fuse holders are their, their Delphi adaptive, I think is what Delphi is called now. They're pull to seat. So you gotta shove the wire in them. Then I'll just strip this back. Now, I know this isn't what everybody says is appropriate for the strippers, but there's no copper came off. I've only done about, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of those. So then these are gonna get crimped. Make sure I have the right, right size here. they're pull the seat so that means that you pull them in and then they lock in place like that so we'll put the other one on
that'll pull down in the fuse holder like that. And this fuse holder comes in the kit. They're pretty good. You can see them on construction equipment, big trucks, automotive. So then your fuse goes on. So it's a 40 amp value. Then it's got a little dust cover to keep stuff out of it. So it's so it's weatherproof. So that's our power and ground. Um, try to put the bat the power or the fuse within about 18 inches of the battery. Um, in the ground, make sure you either ground it to the battery or right to something that's big by the battery. You don't want to trust the vehicle grounds because a lot of times they'll just be like a little, you know, 10 gauge wire from the battery to the body ground. So people that hook like 30 and 40 amp uh, fans and fuel pumps up to the body ground, if they don't beef up that wire from the battery to the body, um, it won't handle the current and you won't get the performance out of the products that you need. Um, something else to think about is steel is a really bad conductor. So I usually home run power and ground wires for all the parts that I'm, I'm doing. And home run means I run power and ground from that product all the way to either a distribution block or right to the battery to get the best connection. While we're talking about power, what uh, is really the max amperage or power input and output that the whole PWM can handle? Um, the PWM can handle about 200 amps inrush. Um, I rated it at 100 amp constant. So it uses an Infineon smart chip inside a smart FET. Um, it's pretty strong, but 100 amps is a lot. Um, and, and the reason why we derate them from what it really can do is because of the temperature extremes in the vehicle. So when it gets really cold outside and you, you induct a lot of heat into a MOSFET, it actually wants to crack or fracture the chip and they'll either fail on or off. So what we do is we derate them. I usually use almost 50% um, when I derate the products for production. So while you're installing this, uh, we had quite a few questions at SEMA. So I thought it'd be a good time to be able to just kind of ask questions about the PWM controller itself. So a lot of people uh, kind of asked us at the show what the difference is like with a module like this compared to say an OEM fan module you kind of explain the difference? Well, like a Corvette fan module is pretty similar to this. Um, it takes the, a PWM signal from the ECU. So what it is, is it's a, it's a varying frequency that drives the fan speed and turns the fans on and off based on what the engine thinks that it needs. Ours does that. The, the primary reason a PWM, a fan, and an aftermarket installation this is really fan noise. You don't need the fan blaring and technically the engine doesn't doesn't need the fan on because the engine thermostat here controls the temperature of the engine um, you always want the radiator colder than the engine so this vehicle's got a 195 degree thermostat which means we want the radiator to be cooler than 195 and the engine will never get over the 195 that the, this thing opens and closes at um, we, since we got the temperature in the head, we went ahead and I set the high limit at, at 200 for both fans to come on. What you'll find is when you run the fan at a lower temperature at half speed, you're really not cooling the engine at all, but what you're doing is you're getting rid of the radiated heat out of the engine compartment. And if you had a turbocharged or hot rotted motor in like this, this old Blazer has headers on it. So it gets rid of a lot of the ambient heat under the hood. Speaking of heat, is there really like a temperature, max temperature that the whole controller itself can run at? I know that we we have the whole controller sealed and potted, so if, as far as weatherproofing, it's pretty pretty stout. But is there, say, a max area or a non-recommended area to uh, mount it? It's made for under the hood, um, so you know anything really under 250 degrees, it's not going to have a problem. Um, you know, you want to keep it away from exhaust and things like that. It is an electronic control module. So on this inner fender well, it's a good spot for it. On the core support, firewall, anywhere like that. Just don't mount it to the engine or to the radiator. So I'm kind of buttoning up the wiring. One thing I haven't done is I haven't, uh, we're going to do some air conditioning work on this. So this is the AC input wire, so I don't have it hooked up. Um, this is the programming port for the RS-485. This is a prototype harness, so actually the production one's got the opposite end of this terminal on it. Um, I'm going to tighten these up, put the dust cover over the wires to protect it, put the uh, coolant tank back where it belongs, and it's done and we can uh, 
check it out. The cool thing about having this RS-45 and the USB is you can hook your laptop right to it and set the temp and then test the fans to make sure they all work right on the computer so it'll fire them all up for you. So uh, one other thing before we kind of wrap it up, uh, on a scale of like one to 10, uh, beginner to expert, how easy of an install is this kind of product for say your guy building building a car at home? I'd say anybody who is feels comfortable with basic wiring. I mean, hooking up a fan is not that big of a deal or a fuel pump. I mean, it's power and ground. Um, you have some sort of sense input, an ignition input. So, I mean, if you, if you watch some videos or even call us and ask us, we can help you walk you through it. So I'd say from a scale of, of zero to 10, it's probably like a three. And then these also, we're offering those in pre-programmed and unprogrammed too, correct? Yeah, so you can order it with the temperature preset so you don't have to hook a computer to it. So you can just pl plug it in and then it'll work standalone on its own. Um, it's also set up to run like if you had a Holly fuel injection system, the Holly PWM signal can run it, um, or like Mtron or Motec or any of the aftermarket high-end uh, fuel injection systems. Wrap it up. Yeah. Just gonna finish this thing up and get the old K5 back on the road.